What is up, everybody, and welcome back to Lesser Athletes. My name is Chan Tay. Like always, an interesting video for you here on the channel today is my Golden State Warriors offseason review. Now, there's a lot of things to talk about the Golden State Warriors. I really wanted to do this video because I feel like the Golden State Warriors had a pretty interesting offseason. A lot of people could say they have a bad offseason. A lot of people could say they have a good offseason. A lot of people could just say, you know what, they lost out on some big things, but they gained back some to make it worth it. There's a lot of different ways you could really go about this offseason, and I feel like they're not even done. I feel like we're still looking at this, so this is maybe a little premature, but we'll talk about um, what I think could be there for the future. But other than that, you know, hope you guys enjoy, and let's get started with this. So for the 2023-2024 season, what happened with them? 10th in the West, 46-36, and 36, a good record, but... 10th in the West, which is kind of crazy to say. I feel like in other seasons we would have said this was a, you know, for sure playoff team. It felt like you had to be just like above 500 back in the day and you would get into the playoffs. But 10th in the West for them. And they lost to the Kings in the play-in, which kind of sucks because um, I think a lot of us, when we saw the Kings versus Warriors, thought, okay, Warriors won that game. So then it's going to be probably Warriors and Lakers to go and see who's the 8th seed. But instead, Lakers won against the Pelicans in the play-in and the Kings uh, won against the Warriors in the play-in, and then, of course, Kings lost to the Pelicans, crazy enough. Um, So, kind of a sad way to go out, especially with a team that I think had a lot of, you know, fu not future, but a lot of win-now players of a past um, finals run with them. So, it's kind of sad to see them kind of lose out like that, but um, definitely wasn't crazy to see because of how their season was going offseason look draft compensation was only 52nd pick you know the warriors they have barely any picks they will give up any picks if they have to um depending on how many trades we'll talk about that even too i actually trade this 52nd pick to the thunder for lindy waters then that pick would be traded to the blazers for the 40th pick and then the blazers would trade this back to the warriors for something else i don't know what that something else was i kind of forgot to look up look it up but the Warriors came back with this pick, which was Quentin Post. I don't think I actually added him on the arrivals. Oh, I don't think I did. But, you know, Quentin Post was here. Not somebody huge, a kind of three-point shooting big man. That was pretty decent. Now let's talk about the free agents. This is where all the craziness starts for the Warriors. Free agents coming in. Gary Payton signed back with a player option. Dario Saric, somebody that really helped the Warriors down the stretch, I feel like lost went to the denver nuggets um wasn't really uh a part of staying with the warriors which i don't blame him i think they he also um got extra money than what he kind of thought he was going to get i also think that um because they signed so many other people he didn't get his chance john robinson former 13th overall pick i don't know if he's part of the team same with the last three uh lesser quinones um kind of funny to see um him here because a lot of people thought after a G League game, or not G League game, after a Summer League game, this was their next Jordan Poole with the season Jordan Poole left. Little did they know. You don't want another Jordan Poole. Um, next, though, we have to talk about Klay Thompson. Um, the whole thing with the Warriors this offseason, I feel like entering this offseason was, was Klay Thompson going to sign back? I think a lot of people were there to tell you, no, he's not going to. I think a lot of people were there to say, yes, he's going to. Um, and a lot of people just couldn't see a way that he would leave. And I'm one of those people that I just didn't know if he would leave. And I think the fact was, if Draymond got his contract after a iffy offseason, whatever, and they were going to pay Draymond Green... A three-point shooter that I feel like could matter a lot in the NBA and Klay Thompson could have got signed too. And for them not to do it, kind of crazy. And I'm kind of shocked that he left still to this day. Um, but, you know, finding out all the behind-the-scenes details, not as shocked in my opinion. So let's talk about our departures. Klay Thompson, of course, going to the Dallas Mavericks. We have Dario Saric, like I talked about earlier, going to the Denver Nuggets. And Chris Paul waved uh, from the Warriors to uh, lose out on 30 mil, I think. Um, there's something else, I think. I think they still owe him some money. But he lost out <sighs> on some. If I just made you yawn, you have to comment in the comments. Um, yeah, so kind of sucks for them to lose some good depth pieces. But the thing about the Warriors uh, offseason, I want to say, when it comes to free agency at least, was... 
they lost a lot of their depth pieces, but they gained a lot as well. Lindy Waters the third, a great great three point shooter, someone that can really score. Probably won't be part of the rotation for a while. Will probably part, uh, be a part of their G League, maybe work out there. Buddy Heald, somebody that, in my opinion, maybe this is a hot uh, hot take, is just like Clay Thompson and could be looked at as a better Clay Thompson. He's as streaky as a Clay Thompson. He can get. As hot as a Clay Thompson, he's younger than a Clay Thompson. This is somebody that I feel like is better. And I feel like I feel confident with saying that Buddy Heald is somebody that is probably going to work very well with the Golden State Warriors if just put him like a Clay Thompson, in my opinion. Next, we have DeAnthony Melton, um, a defensive backup guard that I think is going to work well. He's shown out before. He's gone like crazy steal number game so this is another thing that if you want to build that defensive side of the ball this is a great way to do it and you have a great backup in DeAnthony Melton as guard next we have Kyle Anderson someone that's that Swiss Army knife type someone that can play that power forward position that can really drill pass shoot someone that can kind of score a little bit does a little bit of everything that's Kyle Anderson and the Warriors got him on a pretty decent deal even DeAnthony Melton Buddy Heald all decent deals and the thing about it is that what really interests me about this is that they got great pieces that complement what the team kind of needed slash what the team already has. I feel like Kyle Anderson and Draymond Green are in those situations of similar t- type of builds. Um, I would say Draymond maybe more defensive. Maybe he doesn't score as much. Kyle Anderson maybe the other way around that. But some type of builds, Buddy Heald, Clay Thompson, replacement, D'Anthony Melton, a more defensive guard, something they needed. Made a lot of sense, and it was good moves by the Warriors. So what is their roster going to look like? In my opinion, this is probably going to be the starting lineup. I could see some switches. ESPN thinks Trace Jackson Davis is going to start over Jonathan Kaminga, and I cannot see a world that they do this. Um, they already announced that Brandon Zemski, no matter what, was going to start next season, so... If that's the case, I have to put him on here. Don't call me crazy on that. Steph Curry, Bram Pazemski, uh, Andrew Wiggins, Dante Kaminga, Draymond Green at center position. I feel like you cannot not start Draymond. Um, Trace Jackson Davis, Buddy Heald, Kyle Anderson, DeAnthony Melton, Kevon Looney, Moe Moody. I had to add all extra bench spots because, one, last video someone told me to do it, and it's smart. It is smart. I do understand. I usually don't. And, two... They have depth, and the Warriors have great depth on their team. That could be really interesting because, yes, a lot of depth maybe works out tremendously in the NBA, but I want to see how well it works out in the West because I feel like when you're part of the West, you need some high-tier players. You don't really need the depth, and I feel like this is a pretty good, pretty good um, roster when it comes to depth. But not a pretty good roster when it's coming to wanting to compete at the top. So, will there be more moves looking to the future? In my opinion, yes. When I look at the Warriors, this is a team that looks similar to last season. And you could say, um, well, you know, they got unlucky last season. Curry injury, all this stuff. Okay, okay. But they are not winning anything in the West. And I think every single person can agree with me that they are not winning anything in the West if they have this roster. The thing about the Golden State Warriors is that they have tried for the past couple years to build that old team while also building that young team. It's a thing we see all the time um, with certain teams, even in college football. I mean, Maybe it's because I've been playing too much EA college football. But you build, you have your seniors, and those are your seniors going to help you win, while you have the freshmen, the sophomores that are going to replace them and hope to God that they are the next coming of them, and you're still a powerhouse. Um, So the Warriors try to go with that same thing, and I'm not going to lie, it did not work. You had differences in locker rooms with Jordan Poole, for example, in Draymond Green. You had differences in ideals. You had differences all around. You had people that are young getting pushed to try and win when they're not ready stuff like that does not help a team it really does not why do you think there's been so much drama with them with the older players and the younger players or Jonathan Kaminga not getting minutes because he's a younger player for the older players stuff like that 
there has to be a move for this team to do well. And I would be shocked because if they decide to go with this team, they are kind of screwed. And like Steve Kerr said, everyone's on the train block except for Steph. Will they improve? Eh, I just said a second ago. I don't think we see a world with this exact team that they really improve. Yes, I could see them maybe go up a few spaces, but are we really saying that the 8th seed to the 10th seed last season was a big improvement? Yes, it's an improvement, but it's barely an improvement where I'm not counting that as a huge improvement. Um, prediction for next season. I have two here. First one is if they do not, you know, trade again. Because if they go with the same team, I think that when you look at the bottom teams, the Spurs could somehow jump and go into a play-in spot. We have um, the Grizzlies, who's the 13th spot, could jump up. I don't think Utah really jumps up. I think the Rockets could jump up. With that in mind, that's already two teams that could make them fall. So I really do believe that with this Warrior squad... They could go from 8 all the way to like 12 to 13 if those two teams jump them up. Yes, there might be some teams at the top that fall, but I don't see them fall too much. I think every other team barely improved. The only team that didn't improve and was kind of drastic was the Sixers, or not Sixers, was the Clippers, but I still believe the Clippers could be better than the Warriors. Um, I also think that when it comes down to it, if they do make a trade for, let's say, Laurie, Laurie or Brandon Ingram. 6-10 to tens, I feel like a really good spot to have them. I think they're kind of locked in that play-in area. But I think at the same time, they're not going to be the number one team. You have teams that are light years ahead of them that could beat them. And I just don't see a world where they become a better team than them. Because they're going to have to give up a lot. And I don't think it's just going to work. I think you have to forego your old and go with the youth. And I think it works right now in a competitive West. Great this offseason for me is a B-. minus. I don't think it was as terrible as what other people said. I don't think it was as bad as what other people said. I think it was kind of sad to see what's been going on with this offseason and not a great offseason. But at the same time, you've been gained back, get better players. You got that depth really well. If once they do a trade, I will give this higher. And because they're lingering on trade, it's a B-. minus. If they decide no trade, I'm going to go C plus C. Just straight up C. Something like that. If they decide to do a trade, I will put this higher if it's not an over-overpay. Because no matter what, if they trade for Lori, it's going to be an overpay. Now let's see if it's not going to be an overpay. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I will see you in the next one. Good.